In this class I want to talk about the theory of games, or at least introduce the idea of games into strategy. There's a lot in common between business strategy and games. Uh, they have many characteristics which are the same. Uh, the attributes of a game, as we'll see in a few moments, are very similar to what the business people are trying to achieve in terms of the strategy that they develop. They're trying to win and they have rules and there are regulations and uh, there are outcomes to the game, higher profits or higher market share. So the idea of games and strategy are very very similar and the theory of games was developed back in uh, 1944 by von Neumann and Morgenstern in quite a famous book The Theory of Games and Economic Behaviour and what it did was it showed how strategic interdependence comes about and how we are able to look at a framework for its analysis. Now the framework, as you can imagine, is quite mathematical. Uh, however, don't get too worried, we're not going to get into very complicated mathematics in this session. What I'm going to do instead is to simply introduce the idea of the theory of games and look at the similarities with uh, strategic decision making. So let's first of all decide on what is a game? What are the characteristics of games? Well there are a number of characteristics. First of all when we have games we have a number of strategies. If I am playing chess with you I will have a number of strategies. I, I won't just have one strategy because if I do you'll beat me. You'll know what my strategy is and you'll work out a counter strategy and you'll beat me. So generally speaking I have a number of strategies and in every game we'll have a number of strategies. It could be football. The, the football manager will have a number of strategies that may be used throughout the course of the game. So games have a number of strategies. They also have clear outcomes. We have to know uh, when the game is over. We have to know uh, how, how we can tell who's winning. Uh, we have to be able to assess the game as it goes through. So we have to have some clear indication of uh, how the game has been conducted and what are the outcomes of the game. And there have to be a number of uh, outcomes. The outcome of a game we call a payoff. So the payoff is the outcome of the game. And generally speaking, there's a number of outcomes. Um, in chess, the outcome could be checkmate, or it could be stalemate, but it's an outcome. So we know when the game has reached that point. And generally speaking, we have a number of players in games. I know we can have uh, uh, frisbee. Frisbee is uh, a game uh, throwing a, a disc and running after it. Uh, so you only have one player. But generally speaking, games have a number of players. Generally speaking, the minimum would be two. Chess has got two players. Uh, football have two teams. The teams are made up from different players. But for games to be what we'd normally consider to be a game, we have a number of players. We also have rules. The games must have rules. So we know that in chess if I move uh, the king uh, diagonally the whole length of the board uh, it's not allowed. I've broken the rule. We must stick by the rules if we're going to play the game. Otherwise we're cheating. But we're, we're not playing the game as was intended. And we have a number of decision rules. These summarises, if you like, the psychology of the decision maker. 
for example, what we call a maximin. We look at the worst possible set of outcomes and we pick the best. Now, that's quite a famous decision rule, maximin. We look at the worst that the opponents can do and then we pick the best of the worst. That's a decision rule. There are different ones. There is a, a maxi max. Uh, there are all sorts of decision rules we could look at. We could look at a regret matrix, it's called. We can look at all sorts. But we're, generally speaking, we, we pick on something like maxi min. It's quite a common one. Now, if you look at the, the, uh, the points on this slide, very similar to what happens in business. In business, the competitors have a number of strategies. Differentiate the product, cut the price, uh, open a new market, number of strategies. Clear outcomes. Well, the, the businesses want to make more profit. They want to uh, generate higher sales or get greater market share. And there is a number of outcomes. The outcomes could be greater market share and greater profitability. So there could be a number of outcomes. And generally speaking, businesses have competitors. When they've got competitors, we have a number of players. So it's very similar again to games. And of course rules. Uh, the most basic set of rules would be the, the law, the law of the country. Uh, they can't threaten each other or use violence. They must stick within the rules of the country. But there also there's custom and practice within the industry. What's the acceptable behaviour within the industry? And the decision rules. How did they measure how successful they have been? How did they make decisions? So they might use a maximin. So we can see there are lots of similarities between games and business. Now let's look at the types of games as classified by payoffs. First of all we could have what's known as a constant sum game. And one famous type of constant sum game would be a zero sum game. Well let's say we take market strategy as an example here. Um, if the two companies are dividing the market equally between themselves, so each has got 50% of the market. Now, the total adds up to 100%, so it's a constant sum. It always adds up to 100%. It doesn't matter what size the market is, the two shares add up to 100%. Two competitors, 100%. Now, if one competitor increases market share by, let's say, 10%, then the other one must decrease it by 10%. So if one increases by 10%, it goes to from 50 to 60 the other one must go from 50 to 40. So it's still adding up to 100, it's still a constant sum. 60 plus 40 is 100. Previously it was 50-50. And it's zero sum in the sense that what one player has gained, the other has lost. In the example I've just given you, one moves from 50% to 60%, so it's gained 10%. The other one moves from 50 to 40, so it's lost 10%. So the gains equal the losses. So in total, it's zero sum. It's plus 10%, minus 10%, added together, comes to zero. A zero sum situation. What one wins, the other loses. And exactly what one wins is exactly what the other loses. There are also non-constant sum games. Um, this is where both can win. For example, let's say we were talking about uh, market share. Now in that case it's constant sum, as we just discussed. But if we're talking about the, the total size of the market. Now it's possible, for example, if the companies are growing that both seem to be gaining. The shares may remain the same, but it's still, say, 50-50, but it's 50-50 of a bigger market. So it's 
uh, when one grows, the other doesn't necessarily get smaller. Or both could grow. It's non-constant sum. It's argued, for example, that economic growth in our society means that we have more resources, so people are better off. It's non-constant sum. A constant sum situation is where one grows, the other loses. Now, of all the games that are possible and all the types of configuration of games, probably the most famous is the zero-sum game. This is the, the one where whatever one wins, the other loses. Now, in this case, the sum of the payoffs for each player adds up to zero. What one gains, the other loses. An example, as I said, it could be market share. If there are two competitors in the industry, which we call a duopoly, by the way, if there are two competitors, it's known as a duopoly. Now, player A increases market share by 10%, then player B must lose market share by 10%. That's what I've been saying earlier. What one gains, the other lost. It's a zero-sum situation. Now we can represent this as a, a little, if you like, little matrix showing how this works. So we could have two companies, firm A and firm B. We have an increase in price, a decrease in price, and both of them may do this. Firm B may increase the price, and firm A may increase the price. And these would be what's known as the payoffs. Let's say A gets 70% of the market, and B gets 30% of the market. So if both increase the price, A gets 70% of the market and B 30%. Let's just say. So A gets 70% of the market. Now if, if B increases the price and A decreases the price, then A will get 40% and B will get 60%. Don't worry about whether this makes economic sense or not. Just I'm just looking at the figures here just to see how it works. So under each letter A and B are the payoffs. Well, let's see how this zero sum matrix would work out. First of all, let's work out the the maximum payoffs for uh, for A. Sorry, the, the minimum payoffs for, for firm A. Minimum, sorry. The minimum payoffs for firm A. So the minimum payoff, if A increases the price, the worst that can happen is 60%. And if it decreases the price, the worst that can happen is 40%. So if A increases the price, the worst that can possibly happen to it is 60%. If it decreases the price, the worst that can happen is 40%. So an increase, 60, decrease, 40. The increase in price, the 60, is worse than the 80 that could happen if B decreased the price. So for A, increase the price, the worst that can happen is 60. If it decreases the price, the worst that can happen is 40. Now for B, the minimum for B is uh, 40 if it increases the price. And if it decreases the price, the worst that can happen is 20. Now, if we insert for both of them, this is what we had earlier, then you can see there is overlap here. So the the outcomes must be within the overlap. Now for for firm B, the worst that can happen if it increases the price is 40. Now that's better than the 20 it would get if it decreased the price. So for B, the best strategy is to increase the price. For A, 
the best strategy is to increase the price. In which case the outcome of this game will be 60-40 as indicated there. This is what's known as a saddle point. Don't worry about the terminology. This is a, a, comes from mathematics. But it's, it's what's known as a saddle point. This is a, a solution. This is the equilibrium, the balance. It may require what's known as mixed strategies. I've just worked it out using the, uh, the figures here. But in some games it may not be as easy as this and we'd have to use some mathematics called mixed strategies. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, we don't need it in the context of what we're doing here. I'm just saying uh, for a zero-sum game there will always be uh, a saddle point. There will always be uh, an outcome and always be a solution. But it may require some additional mathematics sometimes known as mixed strategies. So what have we, we done in this session? Well, we've looked at some figures for two companies, uh, figures related to, let's say, market share. We have applied a decision rule, um, Maximin. We've worked out the worst that can happen for each decision for each company, and then we've maximized. And when we did it, we found that one strategy, increased price, for both of them was the best. In other words, they got what they expected. And that's the idea of the theory of games. It's really useful for two-person games, duopoly, but once we get into three or more, it becomes very complicated. In fact, no real solutions emerge. And when strategies are not clearly defined, it's also complicated and we don't even know what the, the payoffs are in a lot of situations so again it's more complicated. As a concept, as a way of trying to look at strategy it's very good. It shows interdependence and it shows how when one company varies its strategy the other company will vary its strategy as well to try and counter it. So they move around the matrix. But in the case we've got here the two-person zero-sum game has got an equilibrium, a balance point, so that is the solution to the game. Uh, I suggest you go online and have a look at some simple two-person zero-sum games and see what you think of it. But that's all I'm going to do in this session, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.